Speaking of looking at other planets, is there any, anything we found looking at other planets recently, Joe? No. <laughs> no. No, we're good. Uh, okay, so uh, are you, do you guys follow or have you heard of uh, uh, John Michael Godier? Mm-mm. I don't think I'm familiar. He, he's got a, a YouTube channel, but he's also got a podcast called Event Horizon. Um, I've, uh, I think I did like an interview with him one time. Anyway. On Sunday evening, I got a, a DM from him, or Ross, his producer, anyway, from um, on Twitter saying, hey, there's something coming out tomorrow about Venus. And I'm like, what? And he didn't know exactly what it was, but he just kind of like heard a rumbling. So I was mm-hmm. like, ooh, I'm in an inner circle now. Check me out. Um, <laughs> or anyway, I had some advanced warning. But yeah, so, so on Monday, um, a paper came out in the journal Nature Astronomy. Here, I'll pull up my screen here. Um, saying that boom can you see it yes yeah all right uh yeah they found phosphine gas in the cloud decks of venus um our our former uh co-host scott manley who only lasted one episode um <laughs> yeah, he, was he did a great video about it <laughs> yeah he yeah he know he didn't know anything he got terrible <laughs> reviews <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so he, he, he did a video about it like that day. I haven't been able to cover it cause I've been like really busy with a, another, uh, another topic, but, um, but yeah, so he talked a little bit about like why, you know, it, it is a poisonous gas. You wouldn't want to breathe this, but really isn't any gas other than any other pure gas other than oxygen. Isn't it poisonous? Oxygen well, is even- poisonous. Yeah, oxygen in too <laughs> pure concentration and, and, yeah. can be too. Yeah. Anything can be poisonous. The, the, what is it they say? Um. The dose makes the poison. I think so. Like anything, if you have too much of it, is, yeah. is poisonous. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, um, it, it is a biosignature, basically. So everybody's been saying, life on Venus, because that sells, you know, clicks. But uh, it is a biosignature. It's not guaranteed of anything. Um, but there have been a couple of papers that have come out about this that have shown that um, there's no known natural process that we know of that could create phosphine in the um, in the amounts that we're seeing on Venus. In the amount, yeah. Yeah, and so um, long story short, um, there's there's a lot to cover. I, I want to go into the details of it because I don't know. But um, no, they they it's the uh, what's the spectra. They looked at the spectra mm-hmm. of Venus's clouds and they saw that there was a dip in the spectra where you would find uh, phosphine. And um, there's so much of it that they can't explain how it got there. Mm-hmm. So, mystery. Yeah, and and so the sorry, you're about to say. I was just, uh, the, one of the things too to re, like the some of the natural causes that that could be. They're saying you know uh, this atmosphere, if you had enough lightning, storms, volcanoes, some of that heat could actually you know fuse some molecules, and that could actually could produce some phosphine. But they're like, there's no way the amount that we're observing could be done by via what we know in known mechanisms basically you know yeah 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 and now that doesn't mean necessarily that it's it could only be life that's doing it there might right. be some other known some other unknown natural right. process that could create it in this way yep. especially considering the extreme environment of uh of venus but mm-hmm. we don't know what that is so that, yes. well, that kind of limited knowledge of everything so you know, <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's that <laughs> um but you know this is exciting to me because um you know that meme where the guy is like looking at the girl in the red dress and his girlfriend is doing that face you know i I saw somebody do that meme where it was like the girl in the red dress was venus (laughs) and the other girl was mars yeah (laughs) like yeah so exactly which actually makes me really happy because i've been wanting i've been wanting them to look more closely at venus for a long time and i actually did a video like two or three years ago about like you know, Venus might be a better option for us to colonize than Mars. If you talk mm. about the cloud layer, not yeah. necessarily on, well, obviously not on the surface because right. you would melt <laughs> like immediately. But um, yeah, like at a certain level in the clouds, the air pressure is the same as here. Um, the temperature is, is close to the same as here, like it's livable. Now there's, you know, sulfuric acid everywhere in the, in the clouds. Um, you still, it's still mostly carbon dioxide. You can't breathe it or anything like that. But um, in some ways, it's actually more temperate in the cloud level of Venus than what we would find on Mars. Absolutely. And it's, Th- and it's a little closer. And the, and the, and the gravity is, is closer to what we're used to. Th- that's mm-hmm. interesting because 
so much talk and hype is around like living on Mars. And I still don't really see how that makes sense ever for us humans. Unless you were born on Mars and you're born into that gravity and that, you know, but like, like we'll never, unless I'm wrong, we'll never be able to like walk outside without a spacesuit on, right? Mm, not realistically. Yeah. I mean, like, like tens of thousands of years, maybe, or something like that. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something where you're like, I mean, at, at that point, we're maybe better off just trying to like fly to one of these other planets that actually is like earth you know these like earth like mm -hmm. planets that are you know thousands of years away travel wise but you know hey we could just keep reproducing along the way and people dying and whatever like you could like create a like ship you that won't get survive. there but your yeah but your kin will like your yeah 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 it'll be seven generations yeah. born on the spaceship before we finally land people there yeah something like mm -hmm. that that's the thing yeah. that that movie Passengers that got me that didn't make any sense at all was the whole like there was just some numbers they threw out in that movie how like this is the you know 10,000th time they've done this and each one is like a hundred year journey. So I'm like this is like a million years into the future or something <laughs> then, right? Like like how yeah. and 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 people only live to 80 still because they were like oh we've got 80 years to go like in a million years I feel like humans are going to be living to 500 years old or something like 80 <laughs> years will be like oh oh damn it okay well I'm and, just and if they were and, in space during all that time their our morphology would have changed quite a bit I imagine yeah to adapt for that quite different yeah the whole but thing is like what no like but but ben to answer your question as far as like why mars over venus or why you know can humans live is that the idea is mars has the potential to become more like earth like it's natural if you warm it up do all these things you know like the things that we're doing to our planet <laughs> are we're turning our planet into venus yeah just literally by by over through greenhouse gas effect like we are doing that currently and that that is Everything we know about, you know, planetary Venus, science, yeah. that's what we're doing. And and Mars, we could turn, you know, at best case, Mars could be more like Earth. You know what I mean? But there's no chance of us taking Venus and turning it and, like, turning off that dial because it's yeah. way too far gone. Um, Maybe yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. Maybe that's how life got here on Earth. Was that's like, like originally we were on uh -huh. Venus and then we, we, we ruined that one. And then, we, but we were like, "Hey, that one looks shiny and pretty." And then we made it here. You know, well, I think the dinosaurs well, just jumped off of Venus because they're so big and strong. <laughs> and they all landed on on Earth, and then they died. I don't know. The Tyrannosaurus Rex on Venus. There's a movie there somewhere. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean that that kind of brings back to the central question, though. If if it is life that's on Venus that's causing this this phosphine in the atmosphere, like what what does that look like? Where could it be? Um, there's speculation that it could be microbes like in the atmosphere see the thing is like the the atmosphere of venus is so venus is actually quite fascinating to me and i'm really yeah. glad that it's in the news now but um the atmosphere is so dense that it's really more like an ocean below a certain point like it's yeah. it's i mean I, I i'm probably wrong about this but i'm just going to speculate that you could probably land like an ocean liner and just have it sit in the in the atmosphere at some point you know if it's buoyant enough yeah mm -hmm. no you absolutely can you can land like yeah. spaceships in the atmosphere basically <laughs> just right so, exactly yeah. like you just have to it has to be buoyant enough it, like like the Neptune? landers that we put on venus it was just they were just rocks basically you know but yeah they were pressure yeah. vessels because they they're basically yeah. submarines because they had to be able to survive all the pressure and yeah. all the heat you know and there's the soviet union sent like nine or ten or eleven or i should have looked it up a Ven venera spacecraft and this is my one of my favorite stories is like one time they spent a sent a yeah. spacecraft all the way to Venus to measure the density of a lens cap. I think I've told you guys about this. Yeah, where, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, they it, had this the lens probe. cap fell off and it was yeah. Yeah, they had this probe that was oh, trying to oh, measure yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. density of the surface of the rocks and stuff and a lens cap fell and it just measured the the density of the lens cap perfectly. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, and so, and another thing about Venus is fascinating is that, I mean, it's, it's size wise, it's almost exactly the same as Earth. And it's thought that once upon a time, it was more like Earth. It, it might have had oceans and had a more temperate climate and it very, very well could have had life on it like at real. the same time that we did or, you know. Yeah, but we can't um, really like go dig around in for fossils there, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so I, I, maybe it was Scott that said this. I saw this somewhere, but they were talking about how, um, 
one of the theories about what changed on Venus that made it go from Earth-like to what it is right now is that there was maybe just the, some massive release of greenhouse gases from underneath the, the surface because they don't have tectonic plates there. Mm. Whereas we have tectonic plates, so there's just like constantly a release of, we're like always farting. The Earth is always <laughs> farting yeah. out greenhouse gases and volcanoes and then splits in the ocean and whatnot so it's just like this constant revolving thing whereas venus was more you know stuck like the shell was mm. immovable and at some point it just kind of like exploded and released all of it at once and then you know it kind of became what it is now interesting so, i didn't realize yeah. that 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 makes sense because yeah we, and because we're constantly venting like that you know our our atmosphere pretty much regulates itself you know our, our planet yeah. is self-regulating you know and that's why it's it's an ecosystem, you know, and to give and take. Well, a little CO two here, blah blah blah. blah, blah, blah does the it, thing. That's why but, it's easy to show like humans' impact on it, right? Because you have like all this data kind of, of all you know known variables. Humans. Yeah. yeah, with like, glacier records and all those things, you can see exactly what Earth had been doing, you know, millions of years prior to us being here, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. oh, look what's happening. Well, at least we can we can definitely measure very precisely for about 4,000 years in, in ice core sampling, like literally to almost yeah. a perfect year catalog of CO2 release. You know, that's one of those things that people- bubbles in there. Yeah, the one of, that's one of those things people ask all the time is like, how can they, you know, and it's a fair question. Like how the heck can you, before we recorded data and recorded yeah. the temperature, recorded the CO2 levels, how can you see that stuff? And that's a totally fair question. But yeah, the ice core samples have been proven to be an incredibly reliable source of, of backlogging basically. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So and Venus. Another way of looking at it, when I was talking about the, the tectonic plate thing, is Olympus Mons on uh, mm -hmm. Mars. Mm -hmm. It's the largest volcano. It's dead now, but it's the largest volcano in the, in the solar system. Mars didn't have tectonic plates like we do, so a little fissure erupted in one mm. spot, and like all the magma just came up in one spot and grew this gigantic oh. mountain. Yeah, and it wouldn't move along like... It wouldn't move like Hawaii, yeah. how it's like this... Yeah. You know, a span of islands. Interesting. Have you been to Hawaii? Yeah, I've been to Oahu. Is it, is, it is a geologist nerd's dream. It's just such a <laughs> cool place. Yeah. Um, I, I went there and I actually did a cruise where you kind of like went from island to island. Oh, so sweet. I got to see every single island and you can see like from Kauai, which is the oldest one, and it's all rusted out and old and worn down. And there's like a Grand Canyon of Hawaii there that's been, you know, eroded over time. And then huh. you go to the big island, which is brand new and it's like black from huh. the volcanic rock and everything. Yeah. You can just like, you can literally see the yeah. aging process of the islands as you go down. It's really cool. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. No, I haven't seen, I didn't get to experience that at all. We were just like in a, uh, Oahu or whatever. Like. That's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's freaking gorgeous there. Well, I do remember I was like, I think I was probably in fifth or sixth grade or something. And we, uh, hiked up a uh, diamond head, like a volcano. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize is, you know, we're going up the, the rim of what it was okay. But yeah, we, we were hiking up the rim and I got to the top. I'm like, where the heck is, I thought we were hiking up a, a volcano and I'm looking around. And like I had to turn around and realize we were in the volcano the whole time or something. <laughs> something happened with my brain where I like realized the scale of the volcano because I just pictured it like this like, you know, city block sized hole or something, you know, like I was yeah. like looking for it. And then I realized I'm like, this whole thing is the volcano. You know, yeah. realize like I'm on the re it was nuts. I mean, it was still really cool. And Tim realized the volcano was inside him all along. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member where you'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.